Honourable Member for Timmins James Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm always proud to rise in this House, but I'm certainly not proud to have to talk tonight about the fact that since January 2015, when the Government of Canada was found guilty of systemically racist discrimination against Indigenous children, uh, a decision that is a, a black mark on everything this nation stands for, that this government has continued to deny its obligation to respond. We have now had two compliance orders issued by the Human Rights Tribunal that this government is ignoring. So what does this mean, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the denial of services, the discrimination? I think of the seven youth from Thunder Bay who were found dead in the rivers of Thunder Bay when they had to leave home at 13 to go to school because they didn't have schools in their communities. And this government sent a bureaucrat to say under oath that they didn't think there was any shortfalls in education for Indigenous youth. I think of the youth who are being denied audiology treatments because it, the bureaucrats will save money, of children who died in Treaty 9 from basic childhood illnesses because the government won't bother to put the medical care for them. I think of the mother who said to me, I want to know where my babies are at night. They say that a nation can't be defeated till the hearts of its women are on the ground. And yet in Indigenous communities across this country, there's more children being taken away from their parents and their mothers right now than at the height of the residential schools. So you're going to hear from the government, oh yeah, we're putting money in. We're putting record money into child welfare. They're $130 million short this year. They've decided they can shortchange the children. They said they would close that funding gap in education. Not a dime has flowed. Well, guess what? The school year has started. They promised the $50 million this year for post-secondary education to Indigenous children. They broke that promise. They say they're going to give record money on Jordan's principal, but they don't tell you that it is not going to include most children in this country. For example, the young Cree girl who was denied emergency orthodontic surgery. When we asked this government to look into it. We found out what were the denial rates. 99% denial rates of Indigenous children needing emergency orthodontic surgery. Can someone on that side stand up and tell me that's not systemic racist discrimination? I think what I find most shocking, Mr. Speaker, is we have a Prime Minister who's named himself the Minister of Youth who said that this is the most important relationship in this nation to repair. But he decided that he could shortchange Indigenous children this year, next year, and the year after. They weren't going to shortchange the upper middle class when they gave them the tax breaks. That money flowed right away. But we have a government that is continuing to play games with the Human Rights Commission, continuing to play games with Cindy Blackstock, and we have children who are continuing to die. In my region, 700 plus suicide attempts in about four communities since 2009. And I'll tell you why that happens on the ground. Because those children are regularly denied access to mental health services. They're regularly denied the ability to get out to get treatment. They're left on their own. What kind of nation thinks they can squander their children? So, Mr. Speaker, the question I ask is what is it going to take to have this government admit that they need to be in compliance with the Human Rights Tribunal and end this. It is the cheapest and simplest of all the promises the Prime Minister make would be to meet those needs of the children. They need to do it. I'm asking them to, to commit tonight. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and thanks to my colleague for raising this extremely important issue. The events taking place in some regions have shown us some real challenges facing First Nations across this country. Over the summer, the Health Minister traveled to many First Nations community in Alberta, Manitoba, Ontario and Quebec to see these challenges firsthand and met with both First Nations and Inuit, and Inuit leaders. To address the urgent need for additional mental health supports in Atabapiskat, Health Canada has provided resources to add two mental health counsellors as part of the Nishna Nishnabi Aski Nation Crisis Response Unit. We're also working with the community, the Vinibaiko Area Health Authority, the province, and other partners to coordinate our response and enhance services for youth at risk. 
To truly improve the wellness of Indigenous peoples, we must focus our efforts on improving the social economic conditions that they face. We need to find a way to restore hope for these communities and to support healthy child development. This is why our government has laid out a comprehensive plan of investment in Budget 2016, which includes $8.4 billion for better schools and housing, cleaner water, and improvements for health infrastructure, including nursing stations. Our government is already taking action to enhance care in all remote First Nations communities. We're improving access to mental health supports, improving infrastructure, and working to ensure needed equipment is available. To address critically needed health infrastructure for First Nations communities, Budget 2016 also provides an investment of $270 million over the next five years. This funding is supporting the construction, renovation, and repair of nursing stations and residences for healthcare workers. Health Canada also continues to fund culturally appropriate mental wellness programs and services for First Nations and Inuit individuals and communities. This includes activities aimed at mental health promotion, suicide prevention, addiction treatment, and aftercare services, counseling, and other crisis response services. We invested over $300 million dollars in 2015-2016 for these programs and services. This includes $13.5 million annually for the National Aboriginal Youth Suicide Prevention Strategy, which supports 138 community-based suicide prevention projects in First Nations and Inuit communities. Strategies to, pre to prevent suicide and improve mental health for First Nations and Inuit need to be developed planned and managed with First Nations and Inuit. This is why Health Canada worked with the Assembly of First Nations and mental, and mental wellness leaders to develop a First Nations mental wellness continuum framework and is working with the ITK to develop an Inuit-specific framework. In response to ongoing mental health and suicide crisis in some Indigenous communities, the Government of Canada announced a further investment of $69 million over the next three years for immediate interim measures to support First Nations and Inuit communities. This funding will increase the number of mental wellness teams in communities from 11 to 43, as well as support an additional four mental health crisis intervention teams. It also provides $9 million in funding for Inuit-specific approaches to mental wellness to address the unique needs of the population and to establish a culturally safe 24-hour crisis support line. Our government is committed to a renewed nation-to-nation -nation rela relationship with, with Indigenous people to make progress on the issues that are the most important, and health is one of them. It is vital to our nation's future that the federal government work in genuine partnership with Indigenous communities and provinces to ensure better health, social and economic outcomes for Indigenous people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For Timmins, James Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my honourable colleague. I guess I have to say what it looks like on the ground. We hear all these slogans and numbers, but the reality is, is that this government has taken the approach of fighting families who are being denied their, their medical rights. It was this minister who decided that she would rather fight a family in court who needed emergency orthodontic treatment, and the minister decided it was worth spending three to four times the amount on lawyers than providing the children uh, their medical needs. This is not a new relationship. This is a very old relationship. This is the old relationship that has damaged Canada since before Confederation. The fact that this government is not in compliance with the Human Rights Tribunal, that it can say, well, we're going to throw money into this program and throw money into that program, that's the colonial attitude of Indian Affairs and Health Canada. They figure as long as they create some program that'll have a sunset in a year or two, they don't have to meet the needs of fact that children are still being denied on child welfare, on education, on health, and the Human Rights Tribunal says it's racist, systemic discrimination. It has to stop. Well, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our government is taking action to enhance care in all remote First Nations communities. We're improving access to mental health supports, improving infrastructure, and working to ensure needed equipment is available. As I mentioned before, in Budget 2016, our government invested, invested $8.4 billion for better schools and housing, cleaner water, 
cultural and recreation facilities and improvements for nursing stations. We also announced a further investment of $69 million over the next three years for immediate interim measures to support mental wellness in First Nations and Inuit communities. Our government acknowledges the release of the ITK's National Inuit Suicide Prevention Strategy. This will be an important step to guide actions needed to address the high suicide rates in Inuit population, and Health Canada announced $9 million for Inuit-specific approaches to improving mental wellness. I would like to emphasize our government's commitment to a renewed nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Indigenous people, and as part of this commitment, we will continue to prioritize issues that are important to us. Thank you.